Just outside the small town of Glenrose, there is a place where endangered species roam free. A place with a goal to keep a safe space for these animals to live and to teach people just like you along the way. Because when we teach people to love the nature around them, it won't just breed more animals, it will breed compassion for all kinds. So join us as we explore Fossil Rim Wildlife Center. So far, we've shown you different animals viewable from the self-drive portion of the park. But did you know that we have a behind the scenes area? Well, this area is only accessible by a tour van and has species that need a more quiet lifestyle. This area of the park is the home of three wolf species, the Mexican gray wolf, the maned wolf, and the red wolf. Each deserve their time to shine, but the red wolf is in need of as much help as they can get. First, I wanted to ask you, how many different wolf species are there in North America? Well, the fact is that North America is home to two species of these apex predators. And before you fire up Google and say, wait, Garrett, it says there's five wolves here on this continent. While that's true, we still only have two separate species, the common gray wolf, the eastern wolf, the arctic wolf, and the Mexican wolf are all from the gray wolf family. And the red wolf, who we will discuss in a moment, is its own species. So I bet when you think of wolves, many of you will probably think of these guys. And for good reason too. Yellowstone has had success reintroducing the gray wolf back to that ecosystem after being extinct there for many years. The thing is though, they actually used the red wolves as an example for that reintroduction. But before we get to that, Let's get to know the red wolf. This species once roamed throughout the southeastern United States from Texas to Illinois. But now, the red wolf has become one of the world's most endangered species. Smaller than its northern cousin and larger than the coyote, the red wolf weighs between 45 and 80 pounds. Their coat is a mixture of brown, tan, and black with red accents on their ears, head, and throughout their entire coat. They are social animals who live in small packs consisting of a pair that will stay together for life and their offspring of different years, typically between five and eight animals. And mothers will give birth to four to five pups on average in April or May. These wolves have a very shy and timid personality, tending to stay clear of human activities. The red wolf's diet consists mostly of white-tailed deer, raccoons, rabbits, and rodents. And since most prey items are small mammals, red wolves do not have to rely solely on pack hunting like gray wolves do. By the 1960s, the red wolf's habitat was continually being destroyed. And with the start of government predator control programs, they were killing them off. They were portrayed as the big bad wolf. I'm sure you've heard that story before. And this left them at the brink of extinction. Which gets us back to the Red Wolf Reintroduction Program. But to take you back to how this all got started, we have to look at the Red Wolf becoming extinct. This meant by 1980, there were zero wild Red Wolves. But thankfully, scientists saw this coming and were able to capture 17 pure wolves from Louisiana and Texas, basically in our own backyard. With these wolves, they would start a breeding program that is still ongoing today. By 1987, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Organization saw an opportunity to reintroduce this species into eastern North Carolina, and they had success. By the early 2000s, the total population within the reintroduction area included more than 150 animals. So you can see how they got the idea to put the gray wolves back into Yellowstone. And for many years, it looked like both programs were a success. But more recently, the red wolves' problems have come back. Part of the problem is coyote red wolf hybrids. So when red wolves in the wild get separated from other red wolves, and a more common species, the coyote, is also in the same territory, you will see them mate together. And this hurts the chances of the red wolf surviving as its own separate species. And by 2012, the reintroduction project was having conflicts with landowners, with the landowners wanting to control the coyote population and then being frustrated with the reintroduction program altogether, which led to the poaching of red wolves. So, where does that leave us? Unfortunately, in a very similar situation as the addicts from our previous episode, with only approximately 10 in the reintroduced population in North Carolina. That's only 10 red wolves. However, this time it's not an African species that's in trouble. It's one of our own neighbors. And it's a species that we as a country should have pride in. 
The red wolf is only found in the U.S., and as we mentioned earlier, they were found all over the eastern United States. Thankfully, because of ongoing conservation efforts in facilities around the U.S., we have approximately 300 wolves. But we also need people like you to help us tell others that the red wolf exists and that it needs our help. All right, guys, when we see you again, we will be exploring another neighbor of ours, the Atwater's Prairie Chicken. And until then, remember to stay wild. Woo-hoo! <laughs>